Can you hear me fine? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we'll come to the afternoon session. And in this session, for the first talk, I'm going to talk about a virtual channel purification. So this is a joint work with um, Zheng Huan Liu, uh, Xin Zhen Zhang, and also Yue Yang Fei. And Zheng Huan is also uh, here in the conference. He did most of the hard work uh, in this work. So um, if you have any further question, you can either approach me or approach him. Yeah. So uh, overall, in this talk, I'm going to talk, uh, talk to you about mostly two things. So first of all, I'm going to introduce a powerful quantum error mitigation scheme with a minimal set of assumptions. And in the second part of it, I'm going to talk about uh, some possible integration uh, between quantum error mitigation and quantum error correction. So I guess this is kind of like the first talk that kind of mentioned about quantum error mitigation, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to try to motivate and explain uh, quantum error mitigation a bit. So in the conventional way to uh, implement QEC, at least uh, those codes that uh, various uh, experimental group are actively trying to actually implement right now, they still tend to have a fair bit of uh, qubit overhead. And usually they have a quite high requirement of gates, like in need high gate fidelity of like one, at least like 1% error rate or so. And also the logical case, when you try to uh, implement on the encoded qubit can be slow compared to the physical operation. So to address this and to try to better utilize the quantum hardware that we already have, um, quantum error mitigation is another way to try to tackle noise. So the essential idea is to use uh, additional number of circuit runs in order to reduce the bias into output statistic using post-processing. So you can essentially look at the picture here where the, vertic uh, the horizontal axis is the possible output values from the circuit, while the vertical axis is the uh, probability of that particular output value. So let's say the ideal value, ideal expectation value is this uh, uh, red dot here, uh, red point here, here, then the noise actually it will shift. Uh, it will, noise will shift uh, the, the, the expectation value to uh, this particular orange point, which it deviate quite a lot. And the output distribution is signaled by uh, this uh, orange curve here. Well, what error mitigation try to achieve is to essentially move the expectation value much closer to the ideal value. And by doing so, actually in the process, we'll inevitably uh, broaden this uh, distribution. And this will also lead to more number of circuit runs needed compared to the original one because the need of reducing the variance of this distribution and thus the overhead of circuit runs here. But the advantage they brings is essentially it requires no or low qubit overhead because it's mostly post-processing. And it also uh, very few additional gates needed. So there is really like very low or no uh, requirement on the gate fidelity in order to be able to remove noise. And furthermore, you usually are computing on the raw physical qubit or like uh, codes of very low distance, because if it's very high distance, then you all of your error are dealing with, are, are dealt with by QEC anyway. So uh, this usually means faster gates. Uh, so I have a talk about the motivation of QEM. So Existing QEM methods, uh, most of them require a various sets of assumptions. For example, you require either like noise knowledge or the ability to tune the noise, or some known symmetry on the output state, known symmetry of the problem, or some uh, restriction uh, on the uh, target state and target problem. So what we're trying to do is trying to remove all of this restriction because all of this, uh, all of this assumption will limit the application scenario and make it very hard for experimentalists to choose the right techniques to apply. So we're going to introduce a new technique that remove all of the assumptions mentioned here. So the way it goes is we will first uh, introduce uh, existing uh, techniques called uh, virtual state purification. So this is a work by. Uh, Alan Kozo in Oxford and also uh, Bill Huggins in, in 
uh, Google. And what they do is uh, they assume that the ideal output is some pure state, right? We denote as row zero here. And then uh, the, the actual noisy output is actually this uh, row zero um, with uh, some error component row E. And we assume there is just one error component orthogonal to row zero here for simplicity, but the scheme goes more general than that. So what the purification process essentially try to do is it try to prepare this purified state, which is essentially proportional to rho to the power of n. And what this will do is if p is small, it will suppress p from p to p to n, which is exponential in the degree of purification n, right? So this is all well and good. It seems like very powerful uh, noise suppression has been achieved, but how do we exactly achieve these states here? So the insights uh, they give is instead of physically prepare this purified state, what you can do is actually very often in experiment in a lot, a lot of, in a lot of problem, you are actually trying to measure an observable on this state instead. You are not just trying to produce, this, produce the state itself. And to obtain this expectation value, it can actually be written and obtain using this circuit here. So what this circuit is, is essentially use n copies of the noisy state row. And then here there is a control, uh, control qubit with a control permutation operator. So this will permute all the copies. So control permutation between the copies. And what this circuit will essentially enable you to do is measuring X and O will form the uh, denominator here and then measuring X will form uh, the numerator here and taking the quotient of them will give you the purified expectation value you want. So this is all well and good, but uh, it comes with uh, some restrictions, so to speak. So it's good that uh, you can suppress error exponentially uh, with the number of copies of row here. Right, but its limitation is its ideal output state have to be a pure state. So its input output state have to be a pure state. And second of all, the noise should be small such that the error-free component remains the dominant component. Because as you see here, if one minus p is small instead, then one minus p will be suppressed more than the p. Okay, so. It's a great technique, but still come with some assumptions. So how do we overcome this? This can be actually achieved by purifying the channel instead of purifying the state itself. So do, what do I mean by that is, let's say we have a error channel with one minus P probability of no error happening and P probability of some error component happening. So instead of uh, purifying the noisy state, we're going to obtain a purified channel in the same spirit where the coefficient uh, is sub, uh, the error coefficient is suppressed from p to p to the n, right? Again, it's exponentially n. And the circuit that we are trying to achieve this is quite similar to before. So it's just this circuit here, and exactly the same as before, instead of uh, trying to physically prepare uh, the purified uh, channel, we're just trying to uh, obtain uh, the expectation value obtained as a result of this purified channel. And we're using this circuit here. So the di main difference compared to before is instead of one control permutation, we're now using two that trying to bracket sandwich these copies of a noise channel inside. And then for the ancillary input, we're not, we are not, uh, we are no, no longer using the same input as the main register. And what we need is simply maximally mixed state input for the ancillary qubit, which can be just prepared by random initialization. So it's much easier to prepare. And so this seems like it's just a simple modification of before, but what it enables you to do is now it enables you to purify the channel instead of the state. And the advantage, first advantage, obviously, bring is it does not require row not to be pure anymore. Um, we, are, we are purifying the channel, so all we need is to say that the ideal channel is a unit tree, which is often the case. Uh, very often in the experiment, we, the ideal kind of thing we want to imp uh, implement is some kind of unit tree. 
And second of all, if you look at before, if you have um, many layers of gates, then uh, the state purification side of things, it can only do one purification step at the end to purify the whole noisy state at, at one go. But if you are purifying the channels, you can actually do it layer by layer, one by one. And this actually enables you to uh, remove the errors as it goes, so to prevent error accumulation, which can uh, increase your power of error suppression by quite a bit. And, and furthermore, if you look at um, this circuit here, so the full circuit have uh, some error rate P. If P is large, as we say before, uh, this, this, this thing does not work anymore. I mean, if P is larger than the uh, identity component, uh, than the error-free component. But if you look at this here, we can subdivide our circuit until there is enough layer such that the error rate within each layer is low enough to be able to achieve a purification. So we can almost always be able to implement channel purification. So this uh, restriction on the error rate is also removed. So with all of this restriction removed, actually we have achieved Oh, actually, we have achieved uh, one of the uh, quantum error mitigation techniques that do not require any of uh, the assumptions below. It do not require knowledge of the gate model. It do not require any constraints on the input-output state. And it do not require any knowledge of the target problem. And it still offers the rigorous performance guarantee of a P, suppressing P to P to the M, as we mentioned before. So uh, another additional advantage. So I have already mentioned by implementing layer by layer, you can remove more error because you prevent error accumulation. Another example that is more powerful than before is if, if you look at the specific example of globally depolarizing noise. So if you, we haven't talked about multiple error component before, but if your error component is smaller, right? Because you are suppressing from P to the M, if you have smaller P, it means you have a stronger suppression. A more error component means that you have a smaller P, right? So more error component means a stronger suppression. If you look at global depolarizing noise, it has a four to the N number of Pauli error components. While if you look at the state, the maximally mixed state, you only have two to the N Pauli components. So the channel uh, variance have uh, exponentially more error component than the state variant. This also means that for the particular example of globally depolarizing noise, uh, channel purification can actually achieve exponentially stronger suppression than its uh, state counterpart. Okay, so this is uh, all I want to talk about, about the purification, uh, virtual channel purification part. And the next question we want to uh, answer is how to actually uh, integrate QEC and QEM. So, because uh, both of these, te because as you know, noise are one of the like, is the constraint of building a, a quantum a quantum computer. So we, we just want to throw everything we have uh, to, to it until, until we can no longer like, suppress the error anymore. So, uh, for the foreseeable future, we, we, we definitely want to implement QEM and QEC and all the other possible error suppression techniques together in order to push the error rate as low as possible. That's why this is a very in interesting and important direction to explore. And what uh, people have done before is mostly put QEM on top of QEC. So what that means is, okay, uh, we don't have the resources uh, don't have the enough um, gate, gate error, enough uh, low gate error rate or enough number of qubits uh, in order to be able to achieve low enough logical uh, error rate. So for the remaining uh, logical errors, we're just going to uh, perform quantum error mitigation at a logical level to suppress that. And that has led to uh, some very interesting work uh, from um, IBM and also NTT. Uh, but this kind of method is mostly uh, 
kind of like viewing QEM and QEC separately uh, without much synergy. So we want something that is like more integrated, so to speak, and maybe provide us with um, uh, some kind of perspective on is there some kind of more general framework going on there. So we will try to prov um, provide such an example. And before that, let's look back at this circuit that we just looked at before. This is a two copy version of the channel purification, right? And if you look at this circuit, the weirdest things here is that we are inputting a maximally mixed state here in order to mitigate errors, right? While maximally mixed state is supposedly the noisiest state. So it's a bit counterintuitive here. And you must think, is there something else we can do there to make this protocol better? So we look at that. So if you input this with some general state sigma instead, and you do the math of uh, performing the measurement of x, but not performing the measurement of o, o first, so just performing your measurement of x, uh, after this x measurement and doing the post-processing, the effective output state before measuring o is this thing here. So what this thing he here is, is you can see that EJ is acting on one side while EI is acting on the other. EJ is from one of the channel while EI is from the other channel. So what this enables you to achieve is some kind of virtual entanglement between these two channels. So these two noise channels are, are virtually entangled um, via this circuit here. So if you look at this, what it enables you to achieve What it enables you to achieve is you, if you choose this to be a code state uh, of a quantum error correction code that can correct all of the noise in this particular error channel according to the KOL condition, then we can actually achieve the same effect as a regular a virtual channel purification. So this is not very interesting because you go through all the trouble of preparing a code state, but what you can achieve is still the same effect as the maximally mixed state. But what is more interesting is now you can actually try to perform syndrome measurement, right? And the result of this syndrome measurement is actually will collapse the noise of one particular channel. But because these two channels are entangled, actually this syndrome measurement will collapse the noise into the particular syndrome subspace of both channels on both register. So what it enables you to do is actually by performing syndrome here, you collapse the noise on this register and enable you to actually perform correction on the second register, which is unencoded. So this can actually enable you to remove all of the noise on the, second, uh, on the main register uh, compared to just purifying it. And what it enables you to do, it enables you to do this uh, with just two copy and only paying the price of like purif uh, purification instead of the price needed to like remove all of the noise. By price, I mean the sampling cost. Okay, so this is uh, far more interesting now. And this is, as you see, is a very integrated way of integrating QEM and QEC. Uh, it's not just putting QEM on top of QEC. Uh, the last kind of things that I want to say is this particular circuit here is a newer thing that we just added onto archive maybe three weeks ago. And what this picture here is, is instead of uh, one error channel, we have two error channel E and F. And here the E and F are the bleep flip channel and the face flip channel. So we are not just want to correct one channel, we want to correct one both bit flip and face flip channel. And what we do is we input a, a bit flip code on one register and a face flip code on the other register. And because of, again, these two error channels, uh, these error channels on the two register are entangled, what it enables you to do is by checking the bit flip noise and the face flip noise, we can actually collapse the bit flip and face flip noise on the second register, and we can correct them on the second register. Uh, so in this way, we can actually, by inputting just a bit flip and face flip code, we correct both kind of noise on one of the register, achieving what can only be done by surface code before. So I will just preempt one of the questions that will bound to be asked here. 
the noise on different registers do not have to be the, exactly the same. They can be different, but I will not go into the details. And I would just want to go with the uh, summary here. So um, what we do is we have introduced uh, QEM techniques that require almost no assumption that have very wide applicability. It also has enhanced flexibility because it can target particular gate layer or particular gates. And it has stronger error suppression compared to before. And it also has very native uh, integration with quantum error correction, enable us to go beyond the usual kind of bias variance trade-off. So enable us to go beyond its original error uh, suppression power without increasing the sampling noise at sampling cost. And it enables the virtual entanglement of different uh, noise elements that enable us to merge kind of the error correction power of different register. And I think this is a very interesting direction to explore. So with that, thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah, here. Uh, thank you for the nice talk. Um, I have a question on the sampling cost of the, this uh, method. Uh, especially, you, you claim that um, uh, by using a, a virtual channel purification instead of a state purification, you can achieve uh, exponential error suppression. I'll say exponentially, uh, I'd say larger uh, error suppression uh, over the state state purification version. So, um, is the sampling cost the same as the uh, state purification if you want to achieve the four to n suppression? No, no, no. So, 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 if you are just using uh, so, sorry, um, I mean the to how to say, I, I, I agree with this uh how to say error suppression rate, but um yeah, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. Achieve yeah, the, 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 more... the sampling cost, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You um, are right. You are right. So, so, essentially, if you are doing just pure QEM, right? It, 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 I mean, different QEM method does have slightly different scaling, but like I say, the general rule is the more errors you want to remove. Right, the more sampling costs you won't need to pay. So in the case of specific comparison between VSP and VCP uh, state and the channel version, uh, VSP already suppresses the noise to quite a low level. Let's say like, okay, it suppresses circuit noise to like 0 0.01 noise per, per circuit run and things like that. So VCP can take this further and the cost will be comparable because it's suppressing very small noise to a extremely small noise. So the increase in sampling cost is small because the no additional noise you are suppressing, the magnitude is small. Yes. So you mean so so there will be more sampling cost, but yeah, yeah. kind of comparable because the the VSP is removing all of the uh, almost all of the noise anyway. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Is there maybe one more quick? Oh, yeah. Thank you for a very interesting talk. Um, I just want to make sure in what regime your your channel virtual channel purification will be useful. Um, I mean, like you said that like you can use you can get purify your channel at each layer, but the assumption we need to do that is that the errors the error rate of um how to say in each each layer should be quite large compared to the control. A swap gate, yeah. but like in this regime, like uh, control swap gate be, may, may be very noisy, and in early fault tolerant regime, I think control swap gate is not not it's not a crippled operator, so it may also be noisy. So, um, I I, I want to know in what regime will yeah, it be yeah, useful? Yeah, yeah, I think this is a very good question. So in in like you say, in this uh, regime, maybe the layer can go smaller, but in photon regime, each layer may need to go a bit deeper such that uh, it's uh, the, the, the error rate of each layer, as you say, need to be larger than the control swap. But in, because as you say, the in photon regime, the control swap probably need to be implemented by CCZ and things like that. So you have um, more calls. So you need to do a trade off there, which means that, okay, Maybe you want to have the layer um, larger or even the whole circuit is a layer. But even if the whole circuit is just one layer, you'll still do better than simply doing uh, state purification. So you mean that you do virtual channel purification in the whole layer? Yeah, you, you can do the whole circuit as a layer or you can like you, you can just as 
adjust your adjust the depth of your layer as you wish uh, depends on what is the error rate of your individual gates in the circuit and also the cost for implementing the control so yeah thank you very much let's maybe have more questions offline and thank the speaker once again <laughs>